Who Lord? What's going on, YouTube? Welcome to the land of reckless logic. Please make sure you guys pop that like button, hit the subscribe button, and please, please, please smack the notification bell so you do not miss any of my posts from me. Let's get straight into this video and let's get straight into the mess because we already know what we're here to talk about. So, uh, I, a lot has been going on with today. A lot has been going on for the last couple of weeks. But I want to start off with Remy Ma. So, apparently Remy Ma's son has been arrested for NYC. Now, I'm gonna, now here's the thing. With stories like this, I'm going to have to curve some of these some of these words so instead of the m word we're gonna be saying red rum that's what we're gonna be saying okay so now it says here new york post rapper remy ma's son arrested for nyc red rum rapper remy ma's 23 year old son has been charged over the 2021 uh ooting of a man in queens the nyp said wednesday girl i'm gonna have to Y'all pray for me because I will be curbing a lot of these words and y'all just pray and just say, hope I don't say the wrong thing. Now it says, Jason Scott and another man, Richard, Scro ooh, his last name, I'm going to mess up, Richard S, 22, were nabbed on first degree red rum charges Tuesday night, three years after 43-year-old Darius Gru Gru G, girl, that last name, was, was G-U-N down in brazen broad daylight attack, girl. The victim was blasted in the head and chest when the ooding broke out at the intersection of 148th Street and Rockway, Rockaway Boulevard in Springfield Gardens back in June 7, 2021. Girl, this happened years ago. Cops are still probing a motive for the slaying, police sources said. At the time of the ooding, p police had, had said they believed a dispute may have preceded the bloodshed. Girl, that's a lot going on. Oh, this is the, oh, okay. This is the first time I've seen the picture of this man, of the victim. Of, okay, I got you. Um, maybe this is the victim. Maybe this is somebody else. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue. No, no, this is the victim. It says 43. He looked older. Okay, I got you. It says, just eight months before being sh being unalive, girl, I'm, these words, the 43-year-old victim was among the dozens in, indicted by New York Attorney General Le Tita James as part of the large-scale drug trafficking probe dubbed Operation Heat Wave. Girl, there's a lot going on. There are people who got this thug life going on. Let me see. Can I do just a tad bit more of... Okay, so that is the guy. Uh, okay, girl. Okay, got you. Okay, I'm following. I'm following, y'all. I'm following. Now, as part of the operation, 54 perps were charged with funneling heroin, fentanyl, and... and, and coca-cola to jefferson county in upstate new york it wasn't immediately clear if scott or swigert girl i probably butchered the lad, that man name had any prior connection to guelbo in the lead up of his slang girl people in these names i'm all, i know i'm messing them up in addition to the red rum rap both men were also slapped with criminal possession of a weapon and reckless endangerment charges cops said Scott's mom, whose real name is Reminis, Reminis Smith, is a Grammy-nominated star who had who had her start in Fat Joe's group Terror Squad back in the 90s. The 40-year-old Bronx native who has a slew of violent arrests to her name, come on, the apple don't fall too far from the tree, allegedly, but girl, let me continue, once served six years in prison over the near-fatal shooting of a friend outside a Manhattan nightclub in 20, 2007. Scott has been in custody since May 9th in, in a separate GUN case. He's, he, he's been held in fit $500,000 bail on criminal possession of a weapon charges, officials said. He's expected to be arranged on the Red Rum Wrap in court in Queens Court next week. Okay. So I'm going to give brief thoughts about this. For one, it's very sad. Um, this if If this is true. If this is true, this is another example of how parents and their... Now, keep in mind, before I say all of that, from what the word on the curve is, from what I'm hearing, so it's a legend, that apparently Remy, and I want to say Papoose, I think that's his father, his father, and Papoose 
are standing by their son's side claiming his innocence. Claiming his innocence. They're standing by his son, their son's side and claiming his innocence. But this is a, another example, if this is true, another example of how parents, lives, decisions, cultivating environments can have and does have an impact on their children. Now, I do remember uh, briefly of, I want to say what, I forgot exactly, but I, I don't remember exactly the, the medium, but Remy Ma has said on occasion that her son does have anger issues, that her son does have uh, issues in terms of his attitude. She has said, I want to say it was an interview I had seen or a do or whatever and stuff. But it's a very sad situation. Um, hopefully the truth comes out. So if he actually did do this, then let the let the cards fall where they may. And if they did not do this, then hopefully think let allow the cards to fall where they may. Now, there is some other things also associated with this situation now apparently this situation allegedly is caused by apparently the victim is apparently re apparently related to kenneth petty or has dealings with kenneth petty something along them lines but we're gonna continue here but we're gonna oh girl they love media takeout on this dang thing over here girl but apparently according to media takeout Remy Ma and Nicki Minaj beef at center of Remy's son's red rum arrest. Explosive. And it says here, and it says, earlier this week, Media Takeout reported that New York rapper Remy Ma's son was arrested and charged with, with ordering the red rum of a prominent New York street dude named D Block. One popular blogger, King AK47, and I was actually going to mention him as well, is reporting an explosive new information which he claims link, links Remy's son alleged crimes to the sheather beef between Remy Ma and Nicki Minaj. The blogger claims that Nicki and Remy's beef was brewing long before the two traded disc records in 2017, which I don't know about y'all, but I already knew about that because they were already throwing subs really at each other. Not really, I'm not gonna say too much of Remy, but more of Nicki when she first got in the game saying, uh, tell the, tell the, tell the uh, B with the crown to run it like Chris Brown. She was, people thought that she was talking about Little Kim, but she was talking about Remy Ma. She was throwing digs. So I know they were already throwing disses. At least not so much of Remy. Nikki was throwing this before then, before 2017. So when Remy got out, she got her back. That's essentially what it was. Now, since according to the blogger, Remy Ma allegedly got, ooh, got, S-T-A-B-B-E-D by associates of Nicki Minaj and she blamed Nicki for the alleged... Oh. Oh. I didn't even know that. No, okay. So allegedly that, that had happened and Remy Ma got uh, injured. That says, yes, you read that right. The blogger claims that Remy's son, in an attempt to get revenge against Nicki and her associates, ordered a hit against D-Block, who was the first cousin of Nicki Minaj's husband, Kenneth Zoo Petty. And I know Zoo is very right for, to match his name. Now, uh, to, to match him. Okay, there we go. Now it's adding more clarity. Because, girl, I was a little confused in the beginning. There we go. And it says here, the story sounds crazier than you can imagine. Listen, so now that's 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 what I was seeing. So that's apparently that's what people are speculating or the police are speculating it would be the motive for Remy Ma's son to go after Kenneth Petty's cousin, alleged cousin or whatever, D-Block. Oh, okay, so now it's adding more context. Now it says, Media Taker has not been able to confirm any of these reports. We can confirm that Nicki Minaj and her husband, Kenneth Petty, are no longer connected to any illegal activity, nor have they been for the last seven years. Girl, that's, so, that's BS, because for one, we all know that Kenneth Petty... Girl, how, how, how does Kenneth Petty make his money? He doesn't have a job, job. To my understanding, he doesn't have businesses, to my understanding. He always lets it be known that he is a street dude. And we also know, if you're not aware, that Nicki Minaj wants to be a street bitch so bad 
So with her wanting to be a street bitch so bad, she connected herself to Kenneth Petty, who also has a street reputation. So I don't know. Yeah, they may not be connected to it directly, but they connected behind the scenes. Because let's be also be very clear. Nicki Minaj, she is the queen of subliminals and she is the queen of dog whistling. So there has been some things that have come out in terms of tweets, songs that can be connected allegedly to some things that has that have occurred. Because let's not forget, and in Conscious TV's words, super freaky grandma, she said something along the lines of old girl went against me, almost took a life, something along them lines. Let's not forget that when Kenneth Petty was in his previous relationship with a woman, Nicki Minaj essentially took, took him from her ass. And then next thing you know, this woman was attacked. Now, I'm not saying that Nicki had anything to do with it, but it is some timing, perfect timing. And it's very coincidental in terms of you took this woman husband and then when she blasting you, and letting it be known that girl you took my husband all of a sudden she's lady almost lost her life and basically got some goons turning her every which way but loose i'm just saying and i'm gonna tell you says but if there's any truth to what this man is reporting there would there may be a giant rico case coming soon girl this gets deep this gets deep well hopefully like i at this point, I'm trying. I'm getting out of the habit, or I'm trying to get out of the habit of trying to always. My thing is now, whatever the truth is, let it be that. So, if Remy Ma's son did this, let the cars fall where they may. If they didn't do it, same thing. If the, all of this is connected to. Uh, Kenneth Petty and some things that happen behind the scenes then let the Rico case and everything fall where they may I'm gonna continue so that's really all I got to say as of right now in terms of the whole Remy Ma situation and Nicki Minaj and all this other stuff Nicki has a history of having of having a lot of trouble following her name girl but I digress now let's get into Birdman and his ignorant ass. So apparently Birdman then tiptoed his way over to the federal penitentiary and were and apparently was talking to some inmates. And so he was talking to the inmates and essentially asking the inmates, what do you guys need? I'm here for you. What do you guys need? And the inmates said that, yo, we're going to need some books. And so Birdman, ignorant ass, decided to come out his mouth and say, you think or you believe that books are going to save y'all? You know what? You you don't have to believe me because the thing about it, I'm not your God. I'm not your deity. I'm not your religion. So let's. I'm actually going to play and let you hear it for yourself. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but he said, do you think that reading books is going to help y'all? Uh, my question, my, okay, so here's my thing. I really don't know if y'all was able to hear that, but my, here's my thing. What else would you be able to do? If you can't provide literature, like the inmate said, if you can't provide literature to these prisons, what else can you provide? What what else can you provide? Can you provide food? Can you provide different services? Can you can you help aid in changing policy procedures? Can you provide some more uh, programs that help transition inmates? from 
being in the federal state penitentiary and transition them back into society because whether people realize this or not, not all inmates stay in prison or stay in jail. They eventually come back out into society. And the gag is, is that whatever mental state that these individuals are in currently, society has to deal with it. So if you're not helping aiding in that, what, if you can't provide no books, then what, what do you plan on providing? What can you provide? Because you said you have the power. Okay, clarify that. What power are you referring to? Are you able to help policies? Are you able to change something? Are, are, are you able to help with programs? But let me see what the people got to say down below, girl. One person says, and it's Dominique Martin, says, everyone is not an advocate and that's okay. And I do agree. Sometimes some people don't need to be in front speaking. A lot of times, if you have the money, you a lot of times you probably need to you probably need to just be connected to those who know what they're doing, know what they're talking about, and know how to get things done, but just don't have the financial backing. And you can just be the financial backing. Sometimes you don't have to be the voice. Sometimes you don't have to be the spokesperson. Because sometimes you make it worse. And people don't trust coming to you for a motherfucking thing. And to be completely honest, Bird, I'm going to leave that alone. Let me continue. I don't know how Tony Braxton was with this man. Where can we donate books? Another person says the best way to hide something from black people is to put it in the book. And they put the arrow emoji. And the thing about it is this, is that actually it was another comment I had seen. Let me see, can I find it? This isn't, this isn't even funny to me. The most valuable asset they can have in prison and he refuses. And then another person says, no disrespect is always followed with disrespect. Another person says, he probably can't read. Another person says, what prison is this? And I'll, do, and I'll donate some books. Another person says, I hate to admit this, but I've been locked up. And this, okay, this is coming right here. I hate to admit this, and I, but I've been locked up. And what got me through, it was books. It's the only thing to keep my mind off. No, girl. Okay, keep my mind working because the way he, okay, it was a typo. Working and to escape from where you are. And it, and, and it also is a learning tool. Books help inmates tremendously. Now, I'm going to read a few more. It says, Malcolm X read the dictionary while incarcerated. Another person says, what was the person, what was the purpose of him being there? That's my point. My thing is this. You are in front of people are in front of inmates who actually live the experience, who are having the lived experience of being inside the state federal penitentiary. They are the ones having that experience day in and day out. You go back to your, to your, uh, to your resources. You go back to your money. They stay in that facility, so they know what they need or what they're not going to need. Also, employees. The CEOs, the majors, all those people, they also can give information on what these uh, these institutions need as well. And so when you have someone in front of you, Birdman, letting you know that we need more books because these books help us out cognitively. Because let's not forget where the mind goes, the body's going to follow. That's the reason why in terms of Becoming successful. Now, there's other factors that now don't now don't conflate what I'm about to tell you guys. There's other factors that that also play a part into what I'm about to say. But take the message, leave out the specifics. You get what I'm saying? What I'm about to say is this is the reason why a lot of times when you listen to a lot of people talk about their transition from coming from one social economic class, moving their way up the scale, or coming from um, a small business and making their way up in corporate America, th a lot of times if you hear them speak, a lot of them have a very consistent theme. The consistent theme is there is a mindset shift. Where the mind goes, the body is going to follow. Now, that, that's not to take away from the outside factors of, what, of why some other people in different situations or similar such circumstances may be kept at a certain level but it is something to say that what like one of the people said in the comment section that 
it kept their minds working because when they're reading that book, guess what? They're not sharpening that shank. When they're reading that book, they're not doing something else that, that can get them in trouble or do something that makes their job, uh, makes their experience 20 times harder. So when you have this inmate in front of you saying, this is what we need, just say, okay, this, this is what you guys need. Got you. I, okay. Put that on the list of things that I can help contribute. Is there anything else we can be able to give you guys besides books? And then you, if, if you, and if this will, this is what Birdman should have did. And this is what, what another person said in the comments said that now everybody can be an advocate. What Birdman should have done is that, yes. Okay, cool. I will take when the inmate said that we need books. Okay, cool. Got you. Have a conversation about the books. What type of books would you guys like to have? Blah, 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 blah. Have that whole conversation. Take some notes. Everybody get to get to writing. And that's the stuff that you gain information of you, 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 you absorb the information that's being told to you. Then you ask for more suggestions besides the books. And then you allow them or if if they're not going in a direction in terms of the results that you're looking for you can kind of steer them in terms of thinking deeper okay cool as in case in point i'm gonna give you an example okay we already got the book situation handled thank you for that information is there anything else anybody else in the room that has that, that has any suggestions about what what you guys need in this facility uh, and then start naming off some things are there different programs that you guys would like to see in place what are some policies or something that may not be you know a certain things that yada yada that's that's how you have that conversation sometimes you may have to throw a nugget or two to get the to get to get to get the result that you need. You get what I'm saying? And also like I said earlier. Okay, cool. The inmates, you got information from the inmates. You can talk to staff. You can talk to staff or you can talk to and on top of that, you can talk to staff, gain information from them, and also if you're 100% serious about this, you can also talk to advocates that's been doing this for a long time who have who has the information who has the knowledge on what prisons need in order for inmates to have success because like i said these people are going to get back out one day they're going to get back into society so it's in our best interest to make sure that they are in a good state cognitively and also socially and all the other stuff, but cognitive, they're in a good state because we want to keep these people in a certain mental capacity. And then we're shocked when these get their ass out of prison and it's your daughter that's being harmed or it's your son that lost their life or that's your mama who's now on a t-shirt because other another person we're not we're not really aiding in the sanity of some of these people now i do understand most you're not going to be able to help everybody but however whatever it takes to be able to decrease the snowball effect why not do it so i i, I personally felt like in terms of birdman that was extremely irresponsible like people have been saying not everybody, not everybody's meant to be an advocate is you, you're gonna have to be in the background or educate yourself or use this as a learning experience as well in addition to that but i'm gonna continue and um girl let's continue from off of that now it says here now this is brought to you guys by the neighborhood talk y'all here for the louisiana becomes the first state to require the ten commandments be displayed in public classrooms Girl, let me see. Actually, let me see. Can I find an article on here? Now, keep in mind, y'all, I've been using this uh, this platform for my articles. It's called Ground News. Now, apparently on Ground News, um, it, it locates the bias that certain media outlets may have, whether it may be political, 
it's typically for political purposes, but I also look up other things up here too. Uh, now that does play a part. No, only because if you may come from a left wing or right wing, whatever your political party may be, there may be certain words that may be charged. They may use certain words to convey a certain message. Now, the reason I say that is because I will have like an article on the same thing and I will read it from a left wing and I read it from the right, the right wing. Or can I get that out? Right wing. And the same information, but however, it's little small details that can change the, I'm going to say not really the, the, the perspective on the story. You get what I'm saying? But let me continue. Um, It says the Ten Commandments. So let me see, can I find it? Ten Commandments. Do, 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 commandments. But honestly, I want to know what you guys think about this stuff. There we go. Oh, Lord, they got Trump in here. Lord Jesus. Well, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. They got the Washington Examiner. So let's see what the people got to say. Actually, no, this says this right wing. Let me see. Can I find somebody more in the center? Who's more center based? Do, 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 do. Let me see. Okay. Oh, girl. Keefe. Okay, CNN is more left wing. Okay, let me try this one. But but he keep talking about Trump. I'm gonna try this one. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna try this one. Let's go with it. We get it. Now it says "Br Proud." That's the name of the article. Now it says Trump late night host weigh in on Louisiana putting Ten Commandments in schools. Former President Donald Trump and several late night talk show hosts are the latest to weigh in on the new Louisiana law that will require the Ten Commandments be posted in K-12 and higher education classes across the state. Governor Jeff Laundry signed the, the legislation earlier this week, making it the first state to require religious posters, come on, religious posters, in public education settings. He and Attorney General Liz Murrell, girl, I hope I did not butcher that man's last name, have said to look forward to defending the move in court. Come on, defending the move, women in these court systems. The ACLU, ACLU of Louisiana, Americans United of Separation of Church and State, and the Freedom from Religion Foundation are suing the state. I just knew that was going to happen. They argue that requiring the Christian document or any religious text in every classroom violates students' rights to religious freedom and a separation between church and a, a church and state. Here's the thing, because before I even continue, here's here, here's my thought process. Do I believe they need to have the Ten Commandments in schools? No, no, because if if the idea is there, it, there should be a separation between church and state. Then, yeah, there needs to be a separation between church and state because. Let's let's call a spade a spade. When it comes to different situations with the same circumstances, a lot, I want you guys to read in between the lines. When it comes down to different situations with or or similar circumstances, people rally behind. There needs to be a separation, and there is an agenda. And so, with that being said, there is an agenda right here. There is an agenda to indoctrinate, and I'm using triggering language, and it's the same triggering language that gets used in different situations. They're trying to indoctrinate children with the Christian doctrine, but they forget that there are people, households, that are not Christian. They forget that there are different households that hold different religious beliefs, and they also forget that there are different households that are atheists. So yeah, let me continue. Trump posted on his Truth Social Network around 12.22, come on, 2.22, a.m. Friday, June 21st, to express his support for the posters. I know this is comical, but I'm going to continue. Actually, no, I'm going to say it right now because I might forget. I love this is comical. He says that he, he supports... The Ten Commandments. Now, let me actually go read off the Ten Commandments. Now, the first commandment it says, "You shall not have no. You shall have no other gods before me." 
I think that's very interesting before Trump because, girl, let you tell it, your God is the dollar bill, the God of money. But I digress. You shall make no idols. It's so funny that Donald Trump will say that he supports the the Ten Commandments, but however, you already violated too because you your God is money. And on top of that, you're, you idolize materials, materials and you also idolize the dollar you should not take thy name of of the lord of your god in vain keep the sabbath day holy honor your father and your mother you shall not red rum you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal that's comical you shall not bear false witness against that against your neighbor. Actually, I want to get into that one just in 2.5 seconds. You shall not come. Back. So here's the thing. I want to get into the last two. You shall not. Bear. False witness. Let's see. Let's get an explanation on that. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. It's the eighth commandment in many Christian traditions and is also known as the ninth commandment in Lutheran or Roman Catholic traditions. Girl, hope I did not butcher that. The commandment prohibits, let's get speaking falsely in any manner, lying, advocating, girl, hope I didn't butcher that devising or and designing ways to deceive a neighbor speaking unjustly against a neighbor misrepresenting the truth in relations with others now, i think that's very interesting coming from donald trump and very comical is because let's not forget donald trump weren't you the one that's literally was literally involved in a situation where you had had sex with a woman a sec a, 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 sex worker to my understanding the sex worker and you lied and tried to give that woman hush and you try attempt to give that woman hush money or you did give her hush money and then you was lying to the public that's you but i thought you i thought you love the ten commandments i thought you was in support of the ten commandments so how can you be in support of something that you're not living how are you in support of something that you're not actually showcasing and actually embodying and you're actually the complete opposite. And also, let's not forget too, aren't you the same person that were that was in support of the unaliving of the five men that were falsely accused? I digress. Let's continue. Now, let me see what the last uh Ten Commandments had to say, you shall not come. Okay. You shall not. Let's get a, let's get a understanding on that bad boy. To convert is to have an unlawful desire for something that is not rightfully yours. Now, I just think that's very interesting because Donald Trump, you are in the world of business. One thing that they always say that business is a doggy dog world. And also we live in, in a society of capitalism. We live in a society of the dollar. And so with people having this idea of and saying that business is a doggy dog world and we live in capitalism, which capitalism is, is that big companies capitalize, bully small companies. That's essentially what it is. You capitalize in your market that's essentially what capitalism is now thing is that if you have made it in this environment of capitalism and you have made it in this environment of business then i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure you violated that last commandment I'm, I I can probably put my top dollar on it that you probably have you probably violated that last commandment. So 
It's just comical that all of a sudden you love, and I say this here and I quote, I'm going to continue from the article. I love the Ten Commandments in public schools, private schools, and many other places. For that matter, read it. How can we as a nation go wrong? This may be, in fact, the first major step in the revival of religion. But here's the thing, Donald Trump. Um, the gag is, is that how can we go wrong if we read it? Because the thing about it, you can read something, but you can also fail at applying it. That's how you can go wrong. I'm just saying. And the revival of religion, which is desperately needed in our country, bring back TTC. But the thing is, is that, girl, if you had religion, you wouldn't be doing the things that you're doing. Because last time I checked, you wouldn't be engaging in SEX work. Not you personally, but participating as in paying this woman for hush money for her services because last time I checked, you're not you're not supposed to be ruled by lust. That's what religion tells you. The Christian religion, which is the Ten Commandments. Now, it may not be a Ten Commandment, but that's part of the seven deadly sins. Lust. It's very interesting how we like to pick and choose. Civil laws have been challenged and overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court in 1980. Justices found in Stone v. Graham that requiring schools to post the Ten Commandments using private donations violated the First Amendment, despite the argument that the reason for posting it was secular, not religious, which is BS, because that's where it comes from. It comes from a religious book, doctrine, and religion. However, the most recent case regarding the Ten Commandments being displayed are at courses have received split backing. In 2005, justices held the two displays at Kentucky Court has violated constitutional rights, while one of the Texas Capitol building did not. At the time, the long drawing was that if the display was meant to promote a particular religion, it violated const constitutional rights. And so my issue with this is that my thing, my, I'm be honest with you, I wouldn't have no issue with any of this if it was fair across the board. So the thing is, is that people want Christian doctrine. I'm going to call it for what it is. I'm not going to be politically correct. People want Christian doctrine, Christian philosophy showcased everywhere. But yet, when it comes down to Muslims, when it comes down to atheists, when it comes down to African spirituality, all these other things are completely demonized and kicked to the curve. So my thing is, I want to have no issue with all these other, all these other people's belief systems or belief doctrines being showcased. But we also know that the demonization always comes behind it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue off of that. Uh, now I did see a story. Now, now here's the thing. Before I said. Donald Trump's full of ish, and he should not be talking. But let me continue. Now, I did see a story right here. There we go. It says, oh, my God. It says, former viral star Little Day arrested and charged with red with the red rum of her two-year-old son. Boy was allegedly beat to, he was, he was unalive by beating by her boyfriend. Neighbors, get into this. Former viral star Little Day, real name Sharday Barker has been arrested and charged with first degree red rum after her boyfriend allegedly beat her, her child to to unalive to be unalive back in 2023. So from what I'm reading for this, so it's not even your child that you putting your hands on. Because the thing is this article so far, what well, I'm gonna say this excerpt so far didn't even say anything about his child. So you putting your hands on someone else's child and then on top of that you take the life of that child. And the, this is the reason why a lot of people, when, when, when a lot of people say that it takes a village to, to raise a family, it takes a village to, I do agree with that, but this, this is the, but this right here is the reason why in terms of discipline, being able to discipline someone's child, this is the reason why a lot, I'm pretty sure a lot of parents don't want everybody just whooping their kids or disciplining their children. Is because, for one, you don't know, you may go too far and end up with this type of situation. And then on top of that, to kind of push to push the envelope a little bit further forward, 
you don't know what type of bias, type of thought process that a person may have that th that can also be used as as a charge to be whooping your child. So if you have a queer child and just so happen the person that's beating your child is queer phobic, might put a little bit more extra oomph behind that whooping. Or you may have a person that may not be too fond of melanated people and they whooping your child. And you may not know that they may have that thought process. They may have a little bit more oomph behind that whooping. I'm just saying, if you even believe in physical uh, repercussions. But I continue. According to the Fox 13 Memphis, on September 4, 2023, Memphis police responded to a call concerning a two-year-old boy that was found unresponsive with signs of trauma. Police claimed he, was, he wasn't breathing, ble bleeding from the mouth, and had bruises across his body. What the were you guys doing? To the point that the child is bleeding from the mouth and bruises across the body. What are you guys doing? 22-year-old Anthony Andrews was then taken to custody for the red rum of the boy after he admitted to hitting the toddler seven to eight times with a braided dog toy in the back face and buttocks. This is a b u s e a b u s e through investigation it was discovered that anthony was charday's boyfriend and not the father of the child he was charged with the first degree red rum Fast forward to May of this year, then the, an investigation ensued and a warrant was issued for Sade for the first degree red rum, aggravated child neglect and aggravated child A-B-U-S-E. The U.S. Marshal Services were able to locate Sade in Dallas, Texas on June 17th, where she was arrested for the felony charges. She was currently waiting to be. OK, here's the thing. Um, I know that in prison. They go, both of them, they're going to turn both of them every which way but loose. In one thing that I will say is that in those type of facilities, you can be a person that red rums people. You can be a person that is a gang banger, part of a gang. You can be a person that uh, scam is a scammer. You could be a person that's in there for fighting. But I will say this. Once you start to be, a, once you're an inmate that engages in the A-B-U-S-E of minors and or women, that's where they draw the line. So I know that if both of them are not put in either solitary confinement or they're put in a program where people who do who act who participated in those crimes are separated from everybody else if those two if those two situations do not play a factor in the environment of Sade and her boy and Mr. Andrews them inmates going to turn them every which way but loose they're going to be monkey stomping them all throughout the cell once, once they find out, I'm just saying, mark my words. So I wouldn't be surprised some, some, somewhere down the road, we find out that they were attacked while they were in custody. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. And this also goes to the reason why every child does not need to be with every parent. Every person does not, every person does not need to have children every person does not need to be to become a parent of a child because you have situations like this i'm gonna see what the people got to say so one user said i'm happy they locked her up to stop choosing men over your children another person says viral star was a huge stretch another person says i don't 
get how you can hurt kids, man. Another person says, I'll never understand letting another man even touch your child. Like, why you ain't just take him out after he did that? And it got the, the, the knife emoji. So I'm going to let y'all know what that what that means. Well, now, Lil Sade, you can prepare to fight every day in prison when all the women that wish they can see their kids find out when that you allowed that to happen to yours. Another person says, y'all let a random beat y'all children fried. If your birth, if your, if her boyfriend did it, why is she, why is she being arrested? Because it's called child neglect. You, because the thing about it is this, it's, I would say it's probably, it's probably one thing. And this make me, me make an assumption. It's probably one thing. If the mother, if Lil Chardé, Lil Chardé, if Lil Chardé was not there and she was at work and this happened, then I don't think they would get, they would press charges or condemn her on criminal offense because she was, she wasn't aware and she wasn't there. Now, if this happened and she was there and she knew about everything the whole entire time, then yes, she's going to be part of it because you knew and you participate. You may, have, may, may not have participated, but you knew about this and you kept quiet. Yes, sometimes you're guilty by association. And since this is your child and he's, quote unquote, legally your responsibility and you allow your boyfriend, who's also connected to you, and you knew what he was doing, hitting this child seven to eight times with a dog toy, which resulted in bruises over his body, which resulted in his unaliving, which resulted in him bleeding out the mouth and not breathing, then yeah, yeah, we're going to lock your ass up too. And... To piggyback off what I said earlier about the her being arrested, in addition to her not being there, if she had no clue, if she had no clue that there was any type of a word going on in the household, then she would be in the clear. But if you knew that was going on, then girl, yeah, they're gonna lock your head. Yeah, girl, you going to jail too? Locked up. They're not gonna let her out, and I hope they don't. Not right now. Now I wonder, I wonder what her sentencing gonna be. That's what I do wonder. But um, that's really it. Let me see, can I read a few more? Then we're gonna see, and then I'm gonna end this video. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Um, rip that poor baby. Oh, oh, was it rip? R.I.P. That poor baby. He's in heaven now, safe with God. Shaking my head. Meanwhile, I just want my chance at being a mother. And y'all garden tools just out here. Not take oh come on, garden too. I just realized when she said she mean health is hoes. Uh just out here taking it just out here not taking it seriously, cashing in on your first class tickets to hell. Girl, this is just a sad situation. Uh, like I'm gonna reiterate, not everybody deserves to be a parent. Um, and whatever the truth is, let it fall and let the cars fall where they may. Um, that's really it for my video for today, guys. Please make sure you guys pop that like button, hit the subscribe button, and please, please, please. Oh, girl, I got my thing up here messing up. Uh, make sure you guys let, let me guys let, let me guys let me know what you guys think down below. Leave your thoughts or uh, what your thoughts are. Uh, let me know uh, what you agree, disagree. Uh, yeah, and that's.